Hi, thanks for visiting Buff Zone. My name is Kyle Ringo. This is Neil Welk, and we cover the University of Colorado football team for the Daily Camera. Doing that job this year has been kind of a roller coaster ride. The Buffs are uh, beating Oklahoma one week and getting waxed by Missouri 55 to 10 the next. Neil, what are your thoughts? Waxed is a kind word for what happened Saturday at Folsom Field, Kyle. 55 to 10, 600 yards in offense, 190 something for the Buffaloes, third worst home defeat in school history. Yeah, Wax doesn't even start to cover the whole uh, gamut of, uh, of descriptions that you could use for that game. Yeah, uh, this Buffs team is, at this point in the season, 10 games in, they're very average. Everything that uh, you think about when you think about the football team screams average. Their record is 500. What's more average than that? You look in the NCAA statistics, they're not really good at anything. They're not horrible at anything. They're right there in the middle somewhere. They're average. And uh, the best thing this team can do at this point is win its last two games against Iowa State and Nebraska. Uh, you know, the, the Nebraska game is a chance for them to jump on one of their arch rivals, kick them while they're down, come away feeling good about themselves after that, and then go to a bowl game. A bowl game would be a, a huge step for a program that went you know, that went two and ten a year ago. If they could finish seven and five, get to a bowl game, that's a it's a good season. And, and that's what you have to do. Is you have to keep that loss last weekend a little bit in perspective. Missouri is a very, very, very good team. I, I, I mean, I don't think they're going to win the national championship by any stretch of the imagination. But they have as many as they have as many offensive weapons as I've seen from just about any team this year. They can do a whole lot of things, and they do it very, very, very well. So you have to take that and you have to say, okay, where was this team a year ago when I'm, and I'm talking about Colorado? They were a 2-10 and 10 team that you know, had trouble beating anybody. This year they've won five games. They have a chance to win seven. Yes, they did get blown out, but what you have to say is can they still make some improvement down the stretch? Can they win seven games? And can they continue to take a step forward? And then in the whole you know, picture of the whole season, it will be a good season for them if they can go ahead and win six or seven games. All right, but here's what I want to talk to you a little bit about right now, and that is these two games that remain on the schedule, Iowa State and Nebraska, to me, are games the Buffs should win. So I'm ready to say that if the Buffs don't win these games, if they don't finish 7-5 and five and don't go to a bowl game at this point, it'd be disappointing. Based on what we were thinking you know, going at the beginning of the season, to be at this point, I think CU fans should be relatively happy. But if they don't finish the job... I would say that it would be a disappointing season if they finish, you know, five and seven or six and six, given some of what they've been able to accomplish. Yeah, I think six and six wouldn't be a, a major disappointment. I think it would be kind of maybe a letdown to some extent. But I think this Iowa State game coming up is going to be a, a toss-up game in a lot of respects because Iowa State's getting better, and we'll talk about that later in the week. But the thing that I you don't want to see happen is what happened to this to the Colorado team in 2005. When they finished the year getting beat 33-16 by Iowa State, 30-3 by Nebraska, and then 73 by Texas. And this is the first you know, true blowout loss of the Dan Hawkins era. What you don't want to see is this thing snowball. You want it to be an aberration. You want it to be a, a, you know, a one-time thing. You don't want to see a blowout loss at, at any point in the rest of the season. You want to see them bounce back and play well. And that's what they have to do next week to make sure that this doesn't you know, turn into you know, some kind of a trend rather than a blip. Yeah, you know, uh, they've lost two of their last four games now by 27 points at Kansas State, 45 points against Missouri. The 45-point loss uh, to Missouri really, to me, kind of felt not so uh, different from the 70-3 to game against Texas. I mean, obviously, 70-3 is an, a monumental loss, but... Uh, it, you know, losing to Missouri by 45 points on your home field wasn't all that different to me. And I think you're exactly right. They, they got to uh, come back strong, which is what I was saying earlier. They have to win these last two games, I think. You know, given earlier in the season, they beat number three Oklahoma. And everybody, including you and I, w was thinking that this team was, was really on the, on the upswing. And Had now, turned that corner. Right, and yeah. now here they are, 500, and they did. basically they, fighting for their life to make a bowl game. They turned the corner, but then they turned the corner again. They've gone around and they've gone around. <laughs> they've gone around the block, and they're right where they started. 
And I think that you know they have a chance to move forward, do some good things still, and a 7-5 finish would be great, but they have to do that. It's like you said, they have to go ahead and make some improvement in the last few games. Okay, so come back later in the week and we'll talk about the Iowa State Cyclones. And hopefully this week, uh, when I go to Iowa State, won't have to spend half the pregame in the stairwell of the press box fighting off tornado. A real cyclone. Yeah, really. That's what, what happened, happened two years story. ago. Two story. Kyle would not lie about things like this. <laughs>